Okay, so gosh, a uh, music history, Michael Sweet, Straper. Um, I'll start, I'll go way back to when I was a kid. First concert I ever went to was Elvis Presley, actually. My parents were big Elvis fans. Uh, they took me and my brother and my sister to, uh, to see Elvis at the Forum, LA Forum. And it was actually the night that Led Zeppelin was there, too. They talk about it. Um, uh, incredible, you know, changed my life. That was a, I was very young, but that was a time in my life when I realized that's what I wanted to do. I was playing music already, but I didn't know that that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and that was it, that night I realized that. Uh, later on, not long after that, I wound up seeing Kiss with my brother, um, again at the Forum. Wound up seeing, not long after that, uh, Judas Priest and Halen, and then it just kind of went on from there. Um, first band I was ever in, uh, it was with my brother and myself. It's called Firestorm. And then we changed the name of the band to uh, Rocks, and then Rocks Regime, and then we became Striper. So, and um, that was, oh gosh, I'm going to say, I joined my brother's band the first time was in, I was 12 years old, so I'm 52, going to be 53, born in 63, so uh, 12 years old, that would have been 75 when I joined. Um, and we did covers, a few originals, but primarily covers. David Bowie, Jimi Hendrix, um, you know, and eventually Van Halen. We got a little edgier as we went along. But music's been my life, man. I was playing on my dad's session. My dad's a country uh, rockabilly singer, was. And uh, I was playing on his sessions when I was a kid, and so was Rob. So I've been in the studio my whole life. I've been around music my whole life. And uh, it's all I've ever done, man, all I've ever known. Formation of Striper, you know, we, we started out as Rocks and then it became Rocks Regime. And when we became Rocks Regime, that's when Oz joined the band. Um, I had to talk my brother into letting him join because Oz was kind of a, a little bit of a wild dude. You know, we did a gig with him at Whittier High School. And we were all in high school at the time and, and we played at lunchtime and the bell rang and the kids were supposed to go back to class. And Oz started uh, telling people not to go back to class not to effing go back to class. And the principal came, the principal came out, the teachers were coming out, they were gonna call the cops. It was a scene. So from that day on, we didn't want to you know, play with Oz ever again. I liked Oz though. Oz gave, us, gave me a ride home every day in his Datsun pickup truck. And, uh, and we played music together, UFOs, Scorpions, and we had a connection. So I always pushed Oz on my brother and kept trying to convince my brother, come on, let's give him another chance. Eventually we did. And he joined the band. And we were still Rock Regime. Not long after that, Timmy was in a band called Stormer. It was a big LA club band. He left Stormer because he became a Christian, didn't want to do that anymore. We wanted to devote the band to God, so it was perfect timing for him to come over and join Striper, Rock Regime. Once he joined, we became Striper. Uh, you know. No, it, it's not a gimmick. It, it never was a gimmick. I mean, it, and I always laugh at that. It's like, if we're going to choose a gimmick, why would we choose a gimmick that's going to hurt us and, and keep us from doing things that a lot of other bands did? I mean, God's not popular. I think if we had remained a, a quote-unquote secular band or whatever, whatever you want to term it, I think we could have been playing arenas for much longer and much faster and sooner. That's my opinion. Um, it, it was a much more difficult task to get to where we are now because we are Christian guys in a rock band. Uh, we've had to sell ourselves and convince people like, look, you know, we're this, we're that, come see us. And people don't want to give us the time of day and they think, oh, those guys are bunch of pussies, they're this, they're that, they must suck, and we've heard it all, just because of that Christian term. So anyway, my point is, I would never have chosen that, you know, uh, if it was just a gimmick, <clears throat> I would have done something else. We, we are 100% sincere about what we do, and the reason why we, we went down that path is we did the club scene for years. I started playing clubs when I was 15 years old. And from the age, and before that, backyard parties from the age of 12 to 15. But from 15 to 20, clubs, clubs, clubs every weekend with Rat, Motley Crue, 
Wasp, all the 80s bands, LA bands. And um, I did a lot of drinking, I did a lot of drugging, women, all that stuff at a very early age, you know? So I, I, I lived that life in that five year period and truthfully, it, I just burned down on it, man, really fast. And I decided, and my brother, the rest of the guys, we decided, you know what? This isn't happening. So we turned things around. We started going to church. Uh, we made a decision to devote the band to God and do something different and still remain though who we were musically. You know, and who we were internally in terms of the look and the, the energy and what we wanted to do. But we just prayed before our shows and we started throwing out Bibles and, you know, some people get a little weirded out by it, but, you know, it's just, that's who we are and that's, that's what we do. Well, we, it's interesting because we've, uh, we've been going longer on this second run. We, we, we formed in 83, released our first album in 84. So from 84 to 91, that was our, our run. Then we broke up. I left in 92. Uh, I just figured that we had done our thing. I wanted to pursue something different. And I didn't get back with the band. We didn't reform till 03. So from 03 to now, 2016, we've been go going much longer than we did the first time around. And we've released more albums this time around too. So we're still very active in recording and touring more than we ever were back in the day. We do, you know, an album every two years, sometimes three. Now we do, you know, two or three albums uh, in a two year period. It's crazy. So we're excited. I love to write music, man. That's always gonna be there. Um, I got a solo album coming out. I've released a few solo albums. It's, if, if, I, if I make an album or go tour, I could be home for two days and I feel like I gotta go make an album. You know, it's just, I'm that way. I'm very motivated and I, I like to be doing it constantly. I'm ADHD, so that helps. OCD, that helps too. Okay. The yellow and black thing, my brother started painting his drums yellow and black way back in the day. And I didn't like it. You know, I, because he started asking me if he could paint my guitars. I'm like, you're gonna ruin my guitar, you know? This beautiful Les Paul or whatever. And uh, he finally convinced me to let him do it, and, and I did. And from that moment on, that's when everything became yellow and black. And that was way back. That was back in 1979, way before Striper. And we were playing with Rat at Gazzari's, and everything was yellow and black. We were a trio, just myself on guitar and vocals, Eric Johnson on bass, Robert, my brother Sweet, Robert Sweet on drums. And if you had seen us back then, everything was yellow and black. But we weren't Striper. You know, so that would that begin. I, I, I'm not sure if Robert just he, I think he was fascinated with those colors. And we used to go out and steal street signs and put them on our rehearsal walls because he loved yellow and black, you know, the caution signs. Um, uh, yeah, man, it, it's been something that that's a Robert thing. I would have either had no colors or I would have gone with a different color for sure. I don't think I even own anything that's yellow. I don't think I own anything that's yellow. Maybe because of that, just to kind of rebel. I don't know, man. Weird.